everybody, my name is Tiffany, I'm the Tipsy Artist, and today we're going live to talk to you about how to paint this beautiful love bison uh, with a headdress on. So we've got the big model back here today, and then I've also got, this is going to be what we'll paint today. This goes with our kit that we sell online. So this is the cute little size here, it's 11 by 14, it's super awesome. All right, so let's talk about all the supplies that we have to begin with. So your kit does come with a painting kit. Mine's kind of a mess because I use mine a lot, but it's big old tubes of premium quality, premium quality acrylic paint. I almost combined two words there with one. All right, and then we have our brush kit here. We have three lovely brushes. So we have our mama brush, and then our little buddy brush, and then our little bit brush. And then you'll have little napkins in yours. I'm using a little rag nearby. And then you'll need to get some water. Make sure you've got some water nearby. And then let's see here, plates. Got some plates here. Got a little bit of paint out already. And then maybe some vino, optional for some, mandatory for others, just depends. <laughs> All right, so we have a lot of people on. Hello, everybody. All right, so who can I see? I can see Cindy and Lo. Howdy, y'all. And there's probably a bunch of other people. The screen just kind of scrolls up, but I can't see anybody else. But hello, hello to everybody who's watching today. And I hope y'all are having a magnificent day. All right, so let me go ahead and start with other parts of your kit. Your kit also comes with line art traceable and some uh, transfer paper here. And then I also include a color pencil now and then also a permanent marker. Um, so this gives you a good idea of how it looks to begin with. So in the very beginning, I'll place the line art over the transfer paper. You always wanna make sure that the transfer paper has the dull finish, the gray side facing you. And then the shiny black side will be facing the canvas. So that's how it looks. And then I just use basic tape. Now your kit comes with some washi tape or you can use scotch tape at home either way. Uh, so I just position that down here at the top. I actually like to leave the bottom open just so I can kind of check my work here. But one of the nice things that we provide for you as well is a colored pencil. That way you can see the contrast of the colored pencil over the top of the black and the white. And that way you can track where you've been. It doesn't just blend into the black. So that's a nice thing to help out See that visual, you can definitely see where you've been. So that helps out a lot. And then with the kit too, we have really cool lettering uh, for you as well now. So we'll have some different words. We'll have um, love that goes with this. We'll also have a variety of really popular words like blessed or welcome, grateful, thankful, dream big, you know, stuff like that. We'll have a big collection for you that's in a really pretty, font that's really popular right now. So you can add that on as an optional step right now as well too, if you wanna go ahead and do that. Again, your kit comes with a permanent marker, so you can do that in here in the beginning. I'm just gonna freehand mine on at the end, but you're welcome to go ahead and place yours on at the very end or the beginning with the traceable. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this back. I've worked ahead just a little bit so that you can see what I've done. This way you don't have to just watch me draw for a long period of time. So I'll pull this back. My canvas is a little bit different than what comes in the kit. So I do so much volume. You have a, your canvas actually has the thickness in the back where you can hang it on the wall. Mine is just like a flat board canvas. So don't think that this is the canvas that comes in the kit. Don't worry about that. So I just go through so much volume. I need like the cheapest canvas known to man <laughs> to paint on. So, cause I do a lot of painting. So this helps me with that. All right, so now you can see the transfers on here. I did go ahead and reinforce all of my work today with the permanent marker. That way you have a really nice uh, line edge that you can see all around it. A lot of beginners really love that. It definitely helps throughout the process. That way you can see your work. Um, I have also um, decided to update the pattern a little bit. So here, and you can just omit it and not do it if, you don't, if you're not a fan of this. But I went ahead and added, added some of that. Um, some people call it Buffalo Plaid or Buffalo Check. Um, I went ahead and added some of that here. I will definitely have that on the line art in the kit. So you can you know, do that if you want. If you don't like it, you can just leave it blank. Uh, so back here, this is um, 
like older patterns that were trending, you know, a couple years back. So we have the chevron print. And of course, still a classic is the cheetah print and the zebra print. Those are still on there. I will add those on today. We'll go ahead and work those in. Uh, but other than that, we're just going to go ahead and keep it just pretty much as is, like the old wonderful classic design that it was. I think I did this painting about two years ago. Uh, so yes, it's been very, very popular. Great seller. All right. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and start the painting process. All right, so I am gonna go ahead and I'm gonna finish out with black. We're gonna make sure that's the very last thing that we do. That way we don't uh, create any kind of muddiness with our bright colors, because sometimes the black can kind of pull into those brights and it can disrupt it a little bit. So we're gonna save all the black to the very end. Again, all this black line work was just done with permanent markers. So we, we're gonna save all the black paint till the very end. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the biggest uh, amount of color here with our color blocking. So I'm gonna start with my mama brush and then we're gonna learn how to mix up some turquoise. All right, so here we go. I am going to start with some primary cyan blue. All right, and these are Goodness, I think this has a little, yeah, they come with a little foil seal, so I'm gonna have to take this off. I don't think I fully did that last time I used it, so I'm gonna go ahead and get a little bit of that, about a quarter size amount, heaping dollop of that. Go ahead and make sure you put the lid back on so it doesn't dry out. All right, and then next up, I'm gonna go ahead and do some of this bright yellow green bright yellow green so we'll do some of this let's do another quarter size heaping dollop of that and then your kit also comes with some titanium white you can use some of that i have some already on my plate nearby since i use so much white while i paint I just have a nice big amount, just kind of already ready to rock and roll there. So I am going to start again with the Mama brush. It is just kind of dry and flexible at this point. You can add a little bit of water to it if you want. Let's talk about that. So you can push it into the water, get it just moist, but you want to go ahead and just kind of squeegee out that excess water, get it to where it's just moist. A couple of pointers here, you can, um, not worry too much about the water as long as your canvas is flat. So in fact, you can play a lot with water in the mix of your paint. It really helps extend it, makes it more fluid. Uh, only caution is make sure your canvas is flat on a tabletop surface. That way you can have all that freedom and not worry about water runs. If it is in a vertical state on an easel, then you have to be a little bit more careful about water runs. So you then at that point, and since I am in a vertical position so that you can see me, I have to be a little bit more careful and I have to make sure that all the excess water is squeezed out of the brush. It's just moist, it's all ready to go. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just pick up a nice big heaping dollop of the white now. Place this nearby. So we have about three equal parts. We're gonna start with that and see where it takes us. So we'll see what happens here. We're gonna make a really pretty turquoise color. Again, this was our blue cyan and a green, it's, let's see, what is the technical color here? Uh, bright yellow green is the technical color of that. And then just titanium white. We're gonna mix all this together. And I am really loving how three equal parts gets us there. That's just a really nice, beautiful turquoise color. All right, so again, blue, green, yellow, and then white. All right, so equal parts. Now we have a nice amount of this to help go ahead and push onto our canvas. So I'm gonna go ahead and start to position this into the bison shape here. Now, when you're applying your paint, see how it's starting to get peekaboo with the white showing through? Couple of cures for that. First one is how you hold the brush. So you wanna hold it parallel to the canvas. This will give you a light hand and it will allow that paint to just rest gently on the surface area. So that's gonna really help give you good coverage. The other way is to, again, hold it flat and you can add a little bit of water to it as well and then help apply that paint. 
and that water will help it kind of flow into the surface area too. All right, so I've got nice coverage here over the surface area. Now when I get next to the line edge, I wanna go ahead and change how I hold the brush. Hold it, now more like a pencil. So this gives you that nice thin line edge and the edge side of the brush. So this will give you a lot of control to work in and around this shape here. And this becomes very helpful when you do your cut-in work. All the way in here, basically right now I'm cutting into the little headdress pattern. So these are little feathers that are coming out and I'm just basically cutting into those. And then you can go ahead and turn your brush a little bit too, over to the flat side. as you continue to just fill this in. All right, so a little line edge, and then remember to turn it over to the flat side of the brush to fill into the surface area. And another good brush for some of this work could also potentially be your little kiddos here, your little buddy or your little bit, you're welcome to use some of those too when you're working into some of these smaller areas. If that helps give you a little bit more confidence to switch over to a smaller size. I do have to start making sure that my brush continues to be thin. See what's happening? It is starting to fill up with paint that fills up the belly of the brush and it basically spreads out the bristles and then I lose that nice thin edge. Now a little cure for that is you can just apply some firm pressure again. And then I'm almost back to that really thin line edge. So I just had to do firm pressure again. Push back and forth. Now we're back, so that's a lot better. And then I can continue doing my cut-in work here. Now it's going to get a little bit tiny in the little feet, so I'll probably have to switch over here in a minute, but I'm gonna to try to use my mama brush as much as I can. This is that half inch flat. Still just using turquoise. And you can always add a little bit more white into this too if you wanna lighten it up a little bit. And a little bit more white pigment in the mix also helps it cover better on the canvas. You just definitely wanna do this while the paint is still wet if you're gonna change up the mix just a little bit. Cause you'll have to really work it in, blend it right back into that other color. Now, I had a little bit of an overlap on that line and I'm not really worried about it because I'm gonna be cutting in with black here at the end and also my beautiful work in the beginning with my permanent marker will just bleed right through. So I'm not gonna lose that line. So that's another reason why beginners love the permanent marker. So it's just all kinds of help in times of need. Helps you relax a little bit with this process. Okay, so it's getting kind of tiny now in areas. 
So I'm gonna go ahead, I wanna make sure y'all can see all this. Turn that camera down just a little bit here. Um, I'm gonna let this brush just rest here in the water nearby. Um, one thing you wanna be careful of with acrylic paint, it does set up and dry pretty quickly. So you do wanna make sure, if you don't have a chance to wash it out right away, make sure that you do go ahead and place it in your bucket of water until you get a chance to thoroughly clean it out. All right, so I've got my little buddy brush now a quarter inch flat, I'm gonna go ahead and push into that turquoise paint, just back and forth, firm pressure, loads up the brush, and then I also maintain my nice thin line edge. So this starts to become really helpful for working into these really tiny areas. And there's this little tail. Just two more to go here. down to the last little footsie here. All right. So I'm gonna try to give this a little bit of a once over here, take a look at it. at everything almost from the side <laughs> when I'm painting so sometimes it's a little bit hard for me to see with reflective light happening. All right I still have the face happening um, so I need to go ahead and pull into this. I will have to switch over to probably my little bit brush to do the very last part of the face as well. Especially we've got that little curl happening at the very end here. And my permanent marker has the line work done there and it will bleed through as it dries. So I'm not really concerned about the fact that I just painted over that. If you're not too heavy handed, it will just bleed through. Now, if you do several coats over that, you can eventually cover it up, but you'd have to really work at it to do that. So we're usually pretty safe with that. Oh, look at, I think I can actually just work it all in with little Betty. I can, all right, beautiful. Okay, so we have our color blocking done for the turquoise. That's gonna be our first step here. And then we'll start to work in some other colors. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and place this into the water nearby. All right, next up, we're gonna go ahead and work in some beautiful red to begin with. All right, so the kit comes with, let's see, what do we have here? Some cadmium red. And then also it has some, of this color. It is primary magenta. Okay, so I'm gonna mix both of these equal parts because I'm looking for more of a cool red. 
And right now the cadmium red is very warm. So I'm gonna start with that. All right, nice dollop of that. Again, about a quarter size heaping dollop of that. And then let's do some of this primary magenta. Same size, then we're gonna keep that equal parts. Okay, so now, let's see here. I guess I want, oh, there it is. Now I'm gonna mix with a little buddy, and then I'm gonna start painting mostly with my little bit here. So let's go ahead and mix up with little buddy. So again, this is primary magenta and cadmium red, but equal parts. So that will bring my red to more of a cool red. All right, so I'm really happy with that, very pretty. And you know, I said I was gonna do a little bit, but I'm loving this little buddy actually. I think it's gonna work well for my feathers. So I'm gonna go ahead and push right back into that. Just make sure I still have my nice thin line edge, and I do. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this section red. Because I can use the thin line edge of this brush to go right up to the tip here of the feather. And then it will cover really nicely here in the center. So then I'm gonna go ahead and turn my handle more over to the side parallel to the canvas, flat side of the brush faces there, and then that will give me nice coverage over the surface area. The reds or dual tones can all have a tendency to be a little bit translucent, so we have to be very careful with our hand, light, gentle touch, and just hold that brush more over to the side, parallel to the canvas. All right, so now I want red here too. I wanna make sure I've got some complimentary shades nearby with the buffalo plaid. I wanna make sure that red is nearby on that one. All right, so nice thin line edge around this shape. All right, it's looking a little streaky with brush strokes, so can see that close up. So I'm gonna go ahead and feather it out with the flat side of that brush. Get some nice surface coverage over the top. So we'll do some red in here. And I'm gonna add it a few more places. And you can use whatever colors you would like in here. So if you want yours to be a little bit more uh, bright with just like hot pinks or lime greens, something really fun like that, you certainly can. Or you can even make it a little bit more muted. And I, help, I always have like a color mixing guide with the kit. So like if you're more of a fan of like um, browns and sage greens, different colors like that, and there's just lots of different options. And then we'll feather this out a little bit. Wonderful, okay, so now I wanna come up here. So I've got that surface area and then this feather, and then I'm gonna move on to another color. Purple is also another really big favorite for some of these. All right, feather that out, flat side of the brush. All right, and then we've got this little section right in through here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the cut-in work first. So the brush is held more like a pencil for cut-in work. 
And then here in a moment, we'll start to feather it back out and turn that brush more over to the side. Okay, so now we're going to go for a brighter yellow tone. All right, so we've got some cadmium yellow. It's very bright and pretty. Nice little foil top, so we're going to go ahead and remove that. Let's do a nice heaping dollop of that. And then I want to go ahead and add just a little bit of white to this to help extend it a little bit. So I've got my little bit brush and I picked up a nice big dollop of the white. So here's a little bit and that cadmium yellow. Let's mix those two together. All right, so we've got this as a start. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and twist it out a little bit. So the brush is definitely loaded up with color, but now I'm just going to twist out that brush to a nice fine point. And then I'll go ahead and start to work this into these shades here. Now, I've still got a little bit of that pure cadmium yellow nearby, so you can touch into a little bit of that as well as, well as your lighter shades. You can work back and forth between those two. So we'll take it out to a nice fine point. I'll go ahead and pick this up so you can see it a little bit better. And then also keeping a steady hand, you can rest the weight of your hand on your pinky here like I'm doing. That's a nice little help. Help stabilize your hand as you're doing some of these smaller moves and these smaller areas. Make sure y'all can still see that. We're gonna work in to the final remaining feathers here. One of the things I'll tell you too on this, I'm keeping mine really bright today, but if you did wanna make this a little bit more muted, on the color mixing sheet, I also talk about how you can take this to a khaki. And basically you just take this same color mix and you add just really a gray to it. So you'd mix up a gray in another quadrant, which would just be black and white. And you can add that to this yellow and it just makes it um, more of like a khaki color. So that's another nice way to create a muted color. And, and you know, just in case you're not a huge fan of all the brights here. But we're keeping ours pretty bright today. All right, so we'll take that out to a little point. All right, so we've got some great color blocking done so far. Uh, so really nice solid color all in the background now. Um, I'm also going to do the little, let's see, um, mid gray for the pattern work on the buffalo checks. Let's talk about that. So let's mix up a little bit of gray. All right, so I've got my clean little bit brush and then gray is really a simple mix. So it is just a little bit of white. We're gonna start with a tiny amount of black to begin with. So just barely touch into the black, mix those two together. We're just making a tiny amount of gray over here off to the side. If you want it to be a little bit darker, more charcoal, you, of course, just touch one more time and that darkens it up real quickly. So, but a little bit of black goes a long way. 
All right, so now that I've got that mixed up, and we just need it for this tiny amount of buffalo plaid here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick little twist right back into that paint. Nice fine point. And then wherever I see, I did my work here in the beginning, and we'll have this on the line art, but basically wherever there is gray, then I just kind of did a rubbing with my pencil to show me that's where gray was. I left the white, just pure white as it is. Your canvas will always be just painted and primed white. And then of course I went ahead and took my permanent marker and just did the black in advance. To me, that's just so much easier here. Now, and you're always welcome to go back over that permanent marker with a little bit of paint, with black paint too, to you know make sure that all of your textures match. Or not, or you can leave it just permanent marker. I bet nobody even notices. But I will say, um, I do like to tidy up at the very end. See, my gray does a little bit of a slight overlap in different areas. And so I always like to come back in with either the permanent marker or just a little bit of black paint to kind of touch up and refine the line work on the buffalo plaid, but I'll do that at the very end. One of the uh, things you need to know about using the permanent marker is that it cannot touch wet paint or it will ruin it immediately. So just always make sure that you use it on a dry surface area. All right, so we've got our gray work done on our buffalo plaid there. Okay, so we've got pretty much all of our color blocking done. So this is very exciting. And uh, now we can start to work in really beautiful pattern work over the top. Okay, so now what we need to do is let's go ahead and focus in on a little bit of our cheetah print work. So for that, I'm gonna go ahead and come back to my, you can use either cadmium yellow or you can use a little bit of brown. I'm gonna teach you how to mix up some brown just in case. All right, so brown, let's actually get, is cadmium orange. All right, let me show you my dial up here. All right, so there is my orange, and then I'm gonna start really small. So I'm gonna just barely touch into the black, push that into my orange, and then that will give me a brown very quickly. All right, so your cheetah print can either be a little bit more golden or it can be this brown color. So if you do wanna keep it more golden, you can absolutely just use the pure cadmium yellow in a pure state without any white added to it. That's certainly an option. We're gonna go ahead and use the brown since it's a little bit more contrasting. You can also add a little bit of white to that brown just to help lighten it up a little bit or just more orange to keep the warmth of it. All right, so there's my brown. And I wanna go ahead and do another twist here with my, my little brush, my little bit brush. So I'm gonna twist in. That will twist it into a nice fine point. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start to make little tiny cheetah dots, cheetah spots. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're basically just going to kind of do a slight little push, kind of wiggle the brush. And these little spots can definitely be imperfect and irregular, and you want to vary the pattern. You want to kind of take it in different, you know, positions. Do a little bit of a push and a wiggle. So I vary how I hold the brush. All right, and we're gonna do some more over here. All right, very pretty. And then let's do 
Just for fun, let's just keep going with the cheetah. I'm, I'm really liking the cheetah print, so let's go ahead and do cheetah print all over here too. All right, so that's a great foundation. Next, we're gonna follow up with a little bit of some black work around the edge. All right, so I just cleaned off my brush. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe it off now. And I'm gonna come back into that black. So definitely wanna make sure your brush is clean, dry, very thin at the end, very pointed. And then I'm gonna do a quick little twist here into the black. So I twist in, that loads it up, but you see it also rotates it to a nice fine point. And then the basic pattern here that happens around all those little spots is it's going to feel like making a little parentheses but you wanna wiggle your hand a little bit while you do it. And make sure your brush doesn't get too thick with the color, because you don't want big spots of this. You wanna keep your lines really tiny, just a little hint of a little tiny parentheses around the edge. And again, just a little tiny wiggle with it. I'm gonna bring this in a little bit closer so you can see better. All right, so we'll do this on all of our little cheetah print patterns. And again, it just feels like a little wiggly parentheses on each side. All right, beautiful. Okay, so, and then this is our zebra print here. That actually comes with the line art pattern transfer. And so I did that in advance with my little permanent marker and just fill that in. And then I just go ahead and leave the white of the canvas white. That just makes it so much easier. And of course, if you're not a fan of the zebra print, you can always just fill in with a solid color too of your choice. And then I do go ahead and make sure that I start to outline all of this. I can start to do a nice black outline. So I'm using my little bit brush Coming in with a nice thin line, just a really nice delicate outline around the edge here. And just take that out to a nice fine point. Kind of help tidy up any bright overlap that you might see. And remember to keep twisting as you reload into the paint and that will keep that little edge of the brush really thin. So it's really starting to look cute with all the really fun pattern happening. Okay, so next up we wanna do some of our 
uh, face work. Now this is definitely something to wear if you're a beginner and you feel a little bit hesitant about this. Just You can let it completely dry and just go right over the top with your permanent marker. That's a really easy way to do this. If you're feeling a little bit more confident and you want to try it with a brush, then let's go for it. All right, so this is our little bit brush here. And so I just follow along. And the basic shape of the eye just kind of feels like a little parentheses and another little parentheses. And then those two connect and then you just fill that in. And then down here for the little nose, it just kind of feels like a little comma. And then you make a little loop right there at the bottom. All right, so there's our little face. Okay, so we've got some nice pattern work in here. Um, also, if you want to do some little loops up in this area here, you can. I've got that on my original here, so I'm going to go ahead and outline this. And the little loops, it kind of feels like you make the number six. That's what it's going to feel like to your hand. So of course you can take that in different directions though. So there's a fun little loop there. And then let's do a fun little dot. So I'm gonna take, this is a nice little technique. It's also a fun pattern that you can do in your feathers. So, but you wanna take the bottom of your brush here, the handle, dip into the paint. See how it's right there on the edge? And then you can press straight forward and then that will give you a nice dot and it creates the same size dot every single time. So you can fill in. And then just for fun, let's go ahead and do, ah, let's just do some pattern with this. I didn't do this on the model, but I think it's really kind of fun. So we'll go ahead and dot out some pattern here. So this is just black, but you're welcome to use a different color. So yeah, really cute. And you can see how it definitely is turning out to be just about the same size dot every single time, which makes it so much easier because if you do try to actually paint on dots, they have a tendency to grow and become very misshapen in all different sizes. So this little trick's very handy, and if you want a different size dot, then of course just use a bigger brush or a smaller brush. And that brush handle will give you, you know, a different variety of sizes. All right, so super fun. All of our pattern work there is done. Okay, so now I need to go ahead and do just a quick little line of black on the little hooves here. So real simple, just one little thin line. It's just a little reference for it. All right, so that, that is now in place. Now I'm gonna switch gears and go to some white. So I'm going to go ahead and rinse out my little bit brush. Dry it off a little bit here, and now I'm gonna go into just pure white. And I need to make sure that it's a nice thin line on the end, so I'm gonna go ahead and just twist right into that white paint. Again, this is my little bit brush. All right, so it's loaded up, nice fine point. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do just a light line that goes all the way around this shape here. And you can also interrupt this a little bit with dots too. Let's just do that for fun too. Just a few of those. I think this actually makes it a little bit easier for beginners. So I'll do a few dots all the way around. Let's do one more there for a little bit of balance. Just using the handle of my little bit brush. And then I'll continue my little sketch of a white line all the way around. All right, so I'm gonna do a quick little wipe there. Let's twist back into the white. 
and we'll take this all the way around. So I'm just keeping a really delicate hand right now, really light touch. Also, resting the weight of my hand on my pinky is another little good trick, remember that. So it just helps balance your hand, allows you to be a little bit more steady for these smaller, more delicate lines. Do a little bit more right in through here. Keeping it really light and delicate in here. And then I don't want to forget about my little feathers, so I'll do another little light sketch of a line just right around those. going all the way around. All right, it's looking good. Okay, um, so in here, I'm gonna add just a little sweep of white. The canvas is painted and primed white, but I wanna add just a little bit more white here, just to give it some texture to match. So paint into that. All right, and then this is where you have either just optional lettering, you can leave it just like it is, or you can do optional lettering if you like that. And so we definitely have all the transfer paper and the line art that comes with the kit to where you can just position that on at the very end when everything's dry or you can do it in the very beginning and actually your permanent marker would have just bled through and then you could just reinforce that with either more Sharpie at the end or more black paint. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just freehand mine on. So, I'm doing love. All right, so we have our love, sweet love. And then if you wanna do little swirls, you certainly can. I have some of that in the model too, or you can leave it just like this, a little bit more clean. So that is up to you. And I'm just kind of finishing up little tiny touches of refinement around my letters here. All right, so again, if you like the swirls, you can do that, certainly to add more of that inside. And how that works is you just make what looks like a little tiny circle and a side of circle. Feels like you make the number six. All right, I'm liking this, I think a little bit more simple this time. So I'm just gonna leave it just like that this time. All right, so now we can just do a couple different options. You can just leave it white in the background, which is nice and clean and bright, and just paint in white all around it. Or you can actually do the black in the background. So either way on that, we're gonna go ahead and just follow in with a little bit of our black. So I've got my Mama brush. And I need to get in some thin areas to begin with. So I'm gonna go ahead and do some firm pressure. Make sure my line edge is very thin. 
and work into these smaller areas here first. Those are some of the tiniest areas. Now, let's see. Let's grab another little bit brush. This is a really tiny area in here, so I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I work that in. Now, the black will always dry the same color, and so you don't have to worry too much about like if something happened right now and I had to leave this right now, I could always come back to it and continue filling in black and I wouldn't have to worry about it matching. It would absolutely match. So I'm not mixing anything else with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and work in the small areas first here. some more in here and then here in a minute then I'll go back to my mama and I'll have her fill in all of the larger areas in the background. So again this is my little bit brush, little liner brush. And then, all right, so that's good. Little detail work there. This is also some small detail work. So let's go ahead and work in and around this little horn. I like to get all the detail work done first and that way I can just kind of relax with the other part and you can just, it's just a lot more therapeutic that way. You wanna optimize all of the therapeutic parts as much as you can. Another little area right in here. All right, still just doing that cut and work to begin with. Another little corner right in through here. All right, so we are looking good to go back to our mama brush now. All right, so there is mama. She still has some black on her. I knew it wouldn't take me too long, so I knew I could get back to her before she would dry up. So normally, I know I always tell y'all to put the brush in the water, but I knew I was going to be with her again in just a minute or two. So now we can just start to fill in all of this just solid black. Now the other thing that I'm gonna to start to do too is I start to get out into the larger areas with the black paint, I'm gonna to start to work in a little bit of a pattern. And you may think that it doesn't matter because it's just one solid color, but it really does because when it starts to dry, you'll see all the brush strokes emerge in the light. And so it helps a lot if they have a little bit of a pattern to them. And I'm gonna show you what that is. So you don't want it to be, you know, brush strokes like this, because you'll see all that in the light and it will look very streaky. 
So what I like to do is I work into the background with the black as I like to do little tiny cross strokes just over and over again. So I, I load up my brush with a nice amount of paint and in all of the background here, whoops, hold on a second. I kinda goobered. All right, let me take a dry brush and just quickly go into that. All right, way to go. Okay, so now into the background, just little tiny cross strokes, just back and forth. So that will create some really nice texture back there. And so you still may have to do a second coat on your black, just sometimes it depends. But for the most part, you don't have to if you crisscross your strokes. It looks really pretty and textural in the background. And you don't see all these streaky lines when you work in the paint like this. So again, just make sure and just crisscross back and forth. We'll keep working all this in. I'm going to go ahead and place this back down on the easel. So when I'm first putting it on, I can be a little bit oh, sloppy, for lack of a better word, and just not worry too much about it, but I'm not gonna let it go with that because I know how it'll dry. So I promise I'll come back in and do my crisscross action. So this is just that first stage here. All right, so you can see how, you can already see those brush strokes and you don't want to leave it like that. So again, come back in over all that surface area and just crisscross it back and forth. I think you can already see like some of that reflective light, how when it is crisscrossed, it looks very different. A lot prettier that way. So to begin with, I'm just gonna keep pushing all this on here. Just for speed, I'm gonna go ahead and push it on in horizontal stroke, get good coverage here over the surface area. And now let's crisscross back and forth. That nice layer of paint right over the top. So I want to make sure and get that all over the surface. And the light will reflect in a really lovely way over the top of that now. All right, we're getting down to the very end here. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it all the way back. Make sure y'all can see. And you can use a bigger brush in here. I have another brush I use a lot. I call it my Big Daddy brush. So that's another option. It's a three quarter flat. And that can certainly be used in here as well. We have that on our website. Tipsyartist.com. <laughs> so. Oh, uh, hi Kim, I actually see that. I don't get to see all the quotes anymore. For some reason they're taking them, they're doing something different on Facebook, but 
I know, I miss you too. <laughs> I will actually be back and eat it on the 12th, so. If you feel comfortable coming out with everything going on. But we're gonna have all the tables socially distanced and yeah. All right, so I'm gonna keep pushing this on now. I need that, almost like a second coat, but little crisscross action. Crisscross. Also, the, um, because of, you know, that thing that's going on, that pandemic, <laughs> I don't know why, it's not funny, but it's like, you know, that thing, that big thing, yeah, the shows are really small, so I definitely will, I could get quality time with you. <laughs> so. All right, little crisscross strokes all over. That's gonna help, again, reflect that light really pretty to that solid color in the background. Oh my gosh, I think we're done. All right, let me hold it up. It's still a little bit wet on the sides, but. Yay! Yeah, it's our beautiful bison, or as Okies like to call it, a buffalo. <laughs> so, all right. So, very pretty. This comes with our beautiful painting kit online, tipsyartist.com. Check it out. Oh, oh my gosh, you're flying out for your birthday. That sounds exciting. Man, I want to fly out somewhere for my birthday. <laughs> that sounds fun. All right, well, yeah, we'll see you soon. That sounds very fun, though, and happy birthday early. So, yeah, cool, cool. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, so if y'all want to paint this with me, you can certainly paint at home. We're doing tons of online classes and selling lots of painting kits, doing Zoom classes, all that fun stuff. So again, yeah, just check us out, tipsyartist.com. And y'all have a beautiful rest of the day, and I'll see you soon.